Hi, everybody. It's been some time. And I wanted to discuss today bottoms and tops of, of human experience and how in the Jewish calendar uh, we experience both and sometimes with not very much time in between. We just celebrated, or commemorated, I should say, the ninth day of Av, which is the blackest day in the Jewish calendar, a real bottom of human experience. And the reading of the Book of Lamentations uh, with its plaintive trope uh, really brings one into the experience of our ancient ancestors at the time of the destruction of the first temple about 25 centuries ago. And the descriptions of the siege and the hunger and the suffering and the death that ensued at that time are, are truly heartrending and make us realize that uh, we who suffer our tragedies today uh, are certainly not alone. Uh, there are these bottoms in human experience and they are universal experiences and um, something I think that we can all relate to from time to time. But the way the Jewish calendar is constructed, there are seven Sabbaths in between the ninth day of Av and the first day of the new year, Rosh Hashanah. These seven Sabbaths of consolation are designed to raise us by degrees from the low point of the ninth of Av, the, the day of emptiness, to Rosh Hashanah, which is actually a time of, of great joy, in spite of it being Yom Hadin, uh, the day of judgment. There's something um, so wonderful and joyful about coming together as a community and, uh, and as families and eating such good food and, and uh, having celebrations at a time when we're also looking seriously at our lives, at uh, our mistakes, and, and also how we can improve our lives. So these seven Sabbaths are extremely uh, significant in that uh, we want to be raising ourselves from the depths of our misery. And I say this uh, purposefully, that we need, I think, to raise ourselves consciously when we are in suffering mode. Not so easy to do, because suffering begets suffering. And I think the particular characteristic of our suffering is that we tend to suffer over our suffering, uh, which makes it many, many times worse. It's not just that we're in pain, but then we start to think, why me? Why did this happen to me? And, and what kind of God is this that would do such a thing to me? And what kind of world is this anyway? And what is the meaning of my life? And uh, all these reverberations actually uh, increase the pain uh, unnecessarily. So it's possible, I think, to um, overcome suffering by consciously raising ourselves up. And how do we do that? By counting our blessings, essentially. By appreciating uh, the good that we do have in our lives. By understanding that our suffering is only as intense as it is because what was taken away from us, what changed, is as good as it was. And to understand that we are still alive um, and where there's life, there's hope and um, rejuvenation is coming. So what can this be compared to? Actually, uh, something as simple as breathing, that we have the out-breath and we have the in-breath, and this is a repeating cycle that goes on throughout our lives, every moment of our lives. So what is Tisha B'Av in relationship to the breath? I would say that as the day of emptiness, as the day of um, destruction, um, we could compare it to the fullest extent of the outbreath, when the diaphragm is fully contracted and when we are fully empty of, of O2, <laughs> of oxygen, of, of the breath going out. Uh, that is that moment of, of, of emptiness and stillness in our process of respiration. What happens from that, that moment in which we are empty is that we breathe in. And immediately there's renewal and revival of the oxygen content of our physiology. And so with that renewed breath, there's renewed life. So this is our experience played out a little bit more slowly uh, with Tisha B'Av and Rosh Hashanah. Tisha B'Av, the day of destruction, the black day of sadness, uh, the empty day in the Jewish calendar, is only a prelude and a precursor to a tremendous wave of renewal and revival that we experience especially at the time of the new year, Rosh Hashanah, 
and Yom Kippur. Something to keep in mind that uh, life is like a repeating sine wave. There is a bottom, and then inevitably there is a top, a peak, which inevitably <laughs> starts a, a downward trend and then a following upward trend. Uh, when we are at our tops as well as our bottoms, it's good to keep this cycle in mind. Uh, nothing in our experience lasts forever. There will be tops, there will be bottoms, sometimes with not very much time separating them. And yet if we're conscious, we can mediate and moderate these experiences uh, simply by counting our blessings and remembering what's good. And then maybe at the peak of our experience, realizing that even this great happiness and goodness that we're experience, experiencing never can last forever. So wishing you um, a wonderfully uh, full and rich experience of summer. Now that we're on the upswing in the calendar, we can look forward to celebrating a beautiful new year together. And I wish you wonderful lives filled with happiness and fullness and richness of all sorts. So hopefully we'll be seeing you very soon again. We wish you uh, a beautiful week and Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>